Okay, the lab number three, the last part, I usually typically run as a demo. What's going to happen is you're going to have two systems set up on the side, and this is really something that you would do versus them. And this is one of the first things I would probably do just to get everything working. Here you have yeast with cornstarch and a little bit of water, and you'll notice that we've put the system in a way that no oxygen could get into this beaker. Over here we have just yeast with cornstarch, and what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our system this way. And then turn it on to about five or six. Same thing goes for the yeast one. This one has this little device set up to it, so you're going to pull this plunger out. You're going to go ahead and try to quickly put this one in so not too much oxygen gets in. Put this on kind of tight. And then turn this to about five or six as well. What's going to happen is the yeast with the corn syrup and the water will start to create um, alcohol. And that liquid will eventually start to come out into this beaker. And what you will be doing is collecting the liquid that's here and the liquid that's here and testing it for alcohol production. And how you would do that is you would, we have all the stations set up. This is set up so all the students can do it, but I typically find that we don't get a lot of alcohol production in about an hour and a half or two hours, but we have enough to do one or two demos. So usually what I'll do is I'll stop the class. I'll show them what the results of this is and then um, that'll be enough. So what's going to happen is you're going to have your tubes. In your first tube, we're going to add, um, this is the one that's going to be looking for alcohol. We're going to have 2.5 mils of water. We're going to have 1 mil of Lugos and we're going to have 1.5 mil of NaOH. For the second tube, the one that we're going to actually take the alcohol from, we're going to have um, water, ethanol, uh, we're going to have 1.25 mils of water, 1.25 mils of ethanol, glucose, and NaOH, and a yellow precipitate. And you can see here that we have a yellow precipitate. I've gone ahead and put all those things in, and you can see that I have a yellow powder that formed. The yellow powder forms to indicate that alcohol was produced and you would just basically go ahead and show them that alcohol was produced and you would explain that this is happening because we're not having oxygen and the yeast is doing an alcohol fermentation and obviously the yeast without the oxygen is not going to be producing alcohol so we would go ahead and look at those two and that's it excuse me i just mentioned something wrong this one's going to have yeast this one's not going to have yeast this one's going to have the sugar with the yeast. This one's just basically water. Obviously, this will never have alcohol in it. This one will have alcohol, so we're going to be looking for alcohol and CO2 production with this one. And that's pretty much it. Then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put on the board what an enzyme and a substrate looks like, and um, I'll basically um, show them the remaining um, parts of the meat lab because this is usually what I'll do while they're still doing their meat lab. They're still going back and forth to the incubator and I usually stop them to do this. This is where I'll reinforce what's happening with the meat lab, showing them the enzymes, showing them the substrates. And once they're completely finished with that part, the last thing that we'll do is we'll pull out our dark reactions versus our light reactions and we'll compare that we'll notice that the controls haven't really changed color. There was no pH change, or maybe very little. Um, with the dark reaction, the one that was done in the um, cupboard, we'll pull that out and find out that the phenol red has turned a little more red, uh, sorry, yellow, whereas the one that's in the light reaction, they're gonna find out that the phenol red will turn a little red, more red, versus that orange color that we started with. So you're going to have to show them that the dark reaction is producing acid from the CO2. The light reaction is making oxygen and it's moving it to a red color. Yellow is the indication of an acid. Red is the indication of a base. So you're going to talk to them about realistically what we're looking for is CO2 versus oxygen production. But we can see it with our, 
uh, phenol red indicator, and that's we're going to compare the colors, and you're just going to have to talk to them about that. That being said, that's pretty much the whole lab.